during the pandemic, uh, I was like, up until then, I'd always kind of been teetering with the idea of quitting. And I was like, oh, this is a perfect, you can walk away fucking hands free, all clean. No one can say anything. Pandemic happened. You can stop doing comedy, got a real job. But like a month, two months into it, I started like writing other stuff. And I was like, oh, I'm never going to fucking quit this. This fucking. Uh, I was like, this sucks, dude. Gonna be the guy I'm never going to quit this. <laughs> this is the worst. Uh, yes, I know that feeling. Dude. Yeah. Walk me through this whole um, cult you just joined. <laughs> like, <laughs> right? So here's, I'll just say what I know about it, right? Here's the thing. I don't know much about it either. Uh, it, okay. Well, I'm going to find out. Uh, so... All I know is about a year or so ago, or maybe it was two years ago, I saw um, Steve was buying, maybe it was two years, I don't know how long ago. Anyway, he yeah, bought this property in outside of Pittsburgh. Is it outside it's of Pittsburgh? It's in Pittsburgh. Yeah, it's like in, it's like a, in, like maybe right outside of downtown Pittsburgh. I would assume, I would consider it downtown Pittsburgh. I don't know if right. locals consider it downtown Pittsburgh. But. And he's basically trying to create what? Like a, not a cult, but like a, like an arts community or something? Yeah, or? my understanding is that it's like a it's a uh, comedy based arts nonprofit. That's what I understand. Right. So it, all arts are pretty much right nonprofit. nonprofit. True. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but they're not all specifically <laughs> comedy based for yeah. their nonprofit. I have a joke. I have, I have a joke. I run a nonprofit. It's called my career. <laughs> uh, so. Is there an angle to this, or is it just... <laughs> you think there's a scheme or something? It's money laundering. No, I don't think it's money laundering. It's, I, I definitely feel that there's a, there's a promo element to it, but, you know... But Steve is, had, is both those. He's like the promo guy. Like, he used to... There was a yeah. contest that he had before that... Oh, is it uh, Steve at a, at, No, it's uh, Hofstetter, oh, right? Okay. So he sort, like, of built, <laughs> he sort of built his career, you know, on his... Like he has a career in spite of like the oh, like yeah. the clubs. I mean, he built it cool. his yeah. own way, you know, and he and he outworked everybody, right? It's basically is what happened. Yeah. and he's funny, you know. He was the original uh, crowd work clips. Yeah, guy. yeah, and everybody made fun of him for yeah. ten years about yeah. the, you know, heck, comedian destroys heckler yeah. videos and stuff. Ended up right? being way right about it. Yeah, yeah. and then that, yeah. They, everybody owes him an apology yeah. because they're all doing it now. You know? Yeah, he was right. Don't waste your material, but yet build an audience. And yeah. he built a channel that also, I don't know how it is now, but it was putting money in his pocket. Yeah, yeah. Know? So he figured out, you know, he, he paid attention to, there's a lot of ways to make it in this business, and he tried, did a lot of them. So yeah. what is it? That's what I mean. Like, I don't know. I do not know. <laughs> um, my understanding of it is that, like, uh, I'm going to be living in this house with three other comedians. On property, there's On house. property, on property. And it's like, uh, the thing that he bought is a church that he renovated. Um, so on property is a house. I'll be living with uh, two other comedians. So it'll be three of us. And I think the intention is purely just to like stay there, create stuff, like put up shows, like do things around Pittsburgh and like be collaborative with the other people that are like members of this foundation and whatever. Uh, but it sounds just kind of like uh, what I'm doing now, except, uh, yeah. <laughs> except, uh, you're like in the middle of it. Like you're, so you're actually sort like of on immersed property. in yeah. this nonprofit, uh, comedy camp. Yeah, exactly. My, my girlfriend actually calls it art camp. She's like, you're going to art camp. Like, That's what yeah. you're going to go do. <laughs> so what attracted, like how, what, how did you hear about it? How did you get attracted to like, I um, want to do this? What was the process? I process? honestly don't know how I heard about it. I don't, I'm not, I know that I somehow ended up on the website where they were like, for six months or whatever it is, uh, you can become a grantee where you just live in the house and like you have access to like the podcast studio and like whatever stuff they have going on there. Uh, and then you're just, you know, there to create, there to kind of like learn stuff. I need to learn how to just like move my career forward of like whatever, because it, there's no career here to speak of. I've just right. like spent most of my time on the thing that I thought I could control, which is just like, creating things and like making sure like I'm as good at, I'm like getting better at writing every day, getting good at like coming up with ideas, writing things fast, that type of thing. But I've never figured out how to turn that into anything that people would pay for. Right. He's I have the, no he, clue. If he is, if he is genuine, like he's teaching that. Yeah. Then 
that I would that would be magnificent. You know I do I mean? think like, that that's he's always part. been pretty open about like here's how you do it. Yeah, and um, the yeah. rest of us are like, fuck, I'm not doing that. That's a yeah. lot of work. The application was all geared in that direction. Like all the questions and stuff were like kind of career based in a way, like making you think about it in a way that like I hadn't. It was all like you know. How much money have you made during this? What do you envision your career as? How do you think of that thing? And like, I answered all those questions honestly, but I don't know how to do any of that shit. I'm like not good at figuring out like where my resources are or like knowing what resources are available. Um, I'm good at controlling what I can control, but like that's always going to get you to a point where you're just like, all right, I've hit the ceiling of controlling what I can control. I need some other people that know some shit to like help me get so are stage. there like seminars and classes or is it like, I don't know? think so. I think that like the people they take in are people that like are a, like, um, not established, but like people who like have a certain type of drive or mentality or something like that to right. go towards like, like, I think the thing that they liked was that I like wrote that play and put that up and like that I, you know, uh, was that was, to, that is good. Like that yeah. was the, that play, like what made you, you wrote, a, you basically wrote a play, booked a venue. Yeah. Advertised it. It was like a three, know. you don't have to wear that three or four part play. It was, uh, the way I put it up, it was a four part play, um, slash up show. So each, each, uh, episode was three, um, for lack of a better word, just sketches, basically just short, but they were short plays, funny short plays. And uh, I strung all of those together within one show. And then I strung all of those shows together over four shows. So by the time it was over, it was a full story, like a full play. And then in the middle of each of those little scenes or little vignette things, there was stand up as kind of like a uh, act break just to kind of keep it interesting while I was like figuring out what it was. Now, did it build where people more and more people came as the show went on? There or were definitely people um, that came and like saw multiple weeks. Um, there were and like there were more people at the end than there were at the beginning. Uh, and there were definitely people that have come up to me since being like, how did that end? I didn't get to see how it ended because it was. I'm going to toot my own horn. I think it was a new concept where it was like uh, you come to a specific venue outside of your home every week it's not a strange concept and like you watch a different episode of tv every week but like to go to a show every week and like get a narr a full narrative told to you week by week i think is a little different so that like an episodic comedy show that's what it was yeah that's what i that's why i went into thinking about it i was like if you have a cliffhanger after every stand-up show that should technically bring people back uh the next week to see what is gonna how it's gonna resolve and if and you do it well it enough worked? it should it worked for like there were like uh it was a small venue that I booked and it was the first time that I was doing it. Like there was a handful of people that came every week and, and got the whole experience. And weren't and like your family and friends. And that were my family come. And That's yeah. great. Yeah. And that felt you, good. That was and cool. then you, did it also teach you how to advertise? Like these are, yeah. these are all the things I think that I'm, I'm without even seeing the, with what you're going to, like, these are the things I would think you would learn like yeah. under now, will he be there like as like a mentor to everybody or is he just like, you guys go at it and, you don't even know like, that. I don't know that. I don't know. That seems, I mean, that I, that's how I would do it too. But I'm a little surprised to hear you just be like, I don't know what I'm doing. I just move there next week and then see what happens. Like, <laughs> well, that seems like quite a, a leap of faith. That's actually way more my speed though. Like I like that more than too much. Like if there was too much structure, I'd be going in with a real bad attitude. If you were making, but it seems, but it seems like one of the reasons you're going is because that you that you won with. I guess there was like a contest. You don't. Not really. Yeah, no, that's definitely one of the reasons I'm going because it's just something. To, it's also something. I was talking to someone about this the other day about like, I think we in, we in Greensboro talk about how good the Greensboro scene is, and I think that that's that's true. We're like but America. Also, we're like we. Th we're yeah. the greatest. Yeah, we, we, but like, we keep saying it. You got to test it. Yeah. You got to like test yourself. You got to like test that every once in a while. Like you can't just stay in one place and say this place is great. And I look, I think that this place is great. I've gotten way better. And I think I keep continue to get better by being around the comedians in Greensboro and like seeing what new things they come up with. But if you went to Atlanta, you'd get even better. Would you though? Probably. Like, I think that like there might be a quantity of better Comics, but is there a concentration of better comics? I've, I've, over the last few months, I've said I don't think so, but I do. There's some, there is like, 
there's some real, because they sure. can't help but get really good being around other people that are better than you and are as good as you or or you're challenged by multiple venues and like sure. there's the opportunity to go sure. do shows after yeah. show. And it's, we do a little bit here of s talking to each other. Yeah, no, that's that's 100% what I'm saying. It's also good, but it's yeah. also like, if we were all getting on stages and always talking to crowds and not just each other, yeah. it would probably get better even faster. I think that's fair. I think that's a fair point. Well, that's what, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's like, so you, when you, I'm, I'm still trying to wrap my head around, like what attracted you to, like you went to the website, you sort of ended up however. Oh you no, started, nothing attracted and then you're like, me. It was oh, a there's purely, a it was a purely like, yeah, let's just throw it. I've, I've got nothing else going on. So okay. I'm just like trying to find any foothold anywhere. Yeah, so I that's kind of what it was, and like this one came through. Too, so. Yeah, I think that yeah. mentality is what makes is what ultimately ends up helping create success. Like yeah. to be able to be like, I care about this craft, and I'm I'm gonna go chase getting better. Like we were just talking, he's been doing it two years, and he, it, it, it like to me, it's like that's such a. How long have you been doing comedy for? Like ten years. Ten years. So, you know, like you, like how much he can he has so. He gets he has the opportunity to do, to do so much work, yeah. In the next eight years, yeah. Just to be a monster at this, yeah. You know, and yeah. not and the hard part is not getting impatient and wanting to be on the next ne the next level, the next. I mean, yeah. Because there's so much to do that you you know, and then yeah. doing sketches, doing yeah. doing improv, doing stand up, doing, and they all sort of help and feed each other. It's so, being patient and also not being discouraged, because like it's you're going to be discouraged at like multiple times a year doing it you know like just, I'm just why am i not it's the same thing why i'm not doing this why i'm not getting that why did that joke not work why did this not go the way i wanted it to go and but like you just gotta i realized it during the pandemic uh i was like up until then i'd always kind of been teetering with the idea of quitting and i was like oh this is a perfect you can walk away fucking hands free all clean no one can say anything pandemic happened you could stop doing comedy got a real job but like a month, two months into it, I started like writing other stuff and I was like, oh, I'm never going to fucking quit this, this fucking, uh, I was like, this sucks, dude. You're gonna be the guy I'm never going to quit this. This is the uh, worst. Yes, I know that feeling. Dude. Yeah. So I was like, once I had that, I was sort of like, okay, well now you should just go look for things, apply for things, just like anything that you can try to get a foothold in again and just see what, where it takes you. I think this is, I think it's cool. I think that it's like, yeah, like no, it, I'm, I'm really excited about it to dive into that. But yeah. you have all, you obviously you're all nonchalant. Like, I don't know what it's going to be, but you obviously have in your head a wish list of like expectations. Yeah. I like, do of, have like, things have, I'm like, I want to come out of there with yeah. 30 new minutes. And what, yeah. like, what is that list right now? Um, I do have my list right now is I want to put up that play again. Uh, I want to get that going. Um, they already talked about, uh, the idea of putting together like a comedy show for specifically, you know, this is uh, something that I've always hated specifically for an Indian audience. And, um, they talked about that and I was just like, I don't fucking want to, that's like my least favorite type of thing. Like, I don't want to do just like an, a, that's a funny a opener, for, like, by the way, for that, for that. That's very good. <laughs> 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 but, <laughs> but I decided, I started to try to like embrace the idea of it. I was like, okay, let's say that you were going to do that. Like, what would your version of that look like? What yeah. would make it be something that you did? And I came up with a couple ideas that I was like, oh, even if this doesn't go here, I would like to try to put these ideas together. Like, I actually think these are like the two ideas that I came up with for a show or like, um, oh, whatever, I'll just tell you. One of them is like, um, the idea of like first generation immigrants. And I think this is true, like not just with Indian people, but like every like group of kids like my age, they would go to um, like their parents' friend's house, an Indian parent's friend's house, and then just be put like somewhere in the basement or like somewhere off on a side room. And it was just like the whole group of kids just like playing video games or like coming up with some idea or like playing tag or something like that or doing something just like off with the parents. But like, 
there's all these like constants from people in different cultures where it's like the parents come in and check on you. It's like at the end, you kind of like get a little sweet and this thing, you know, that type of thing. But I don't um, think that's just to Indian. I don't think it is either. I, did, I, I, I pitched it and it was like, oh, someone was like, yeah, I was Jewish and that happened too. Yeah. And I was like, that would be, so was that was the idea. I we were and that happened. Yeah. <laughs> the parents just wanted the kids out of the fucking room. <laughs> like, I think that's a universal. <laughs> yeah. But like, so I was like, if you could recreate that, that concept, maybe like in a sketch show or maybe like a, like a audience participation kind of game show type of thing. Uh, yeah. Table. yeah. The kids table, something like that. Like that would be something like that would be my, my version would be coming at it from an Indian lens. Cause that's what I know. Right. And like, that would be one that I'd be interested in doing. Are so your, I was like, are your parents first generation? Man, my parents are immigrants. They both moved. That's yeah. So you're, that, that would mean you're first, first generation. generation. Yeah. So what was harder to get rid of the Southern accent or the Indian accent? They didn't have Indian accents, Tom. What the fuck? Why wouldn't they? <laughs> Not everyone has accents, Tom. What you do don't... you think they sound like, Tom? Doing a yeah, go ahead, they Tom. They came from Doing India. A... They would speak with an Indian accent. Like, it'd be like I come from, if you come from New York, you speak with a New York accent. Like, Where do you it... come from? I'm a mutt. Okay. So I was born in, in on Long Island. I was there till five or six. And then I was in uh, North Dakota. Then I was in Illinois. Then I was in... Another part of Illinois, then I was in Atlanta, then I was in Wisconsin, a little Colorado, and then back to Atlanta, and then some Florida. You know, I miss all over the place. What are your uh, cultural heritage? Uh, I, what, I, what do you mean? Aren't you uh, Lebanese? I'm like part Lebanese, part oh, okay. Irish. Mostly. Your parents were immigrants or no? Uh, my grandfather was an immigrant. Oh, okay, child. that doesn't count. <laughs> it doesn't huh? count. That doesn't count. <laughs> that Indian accent is exaggerated. The only reason you're thinking of that because is because of Hank Azaria. No, because I've met Indians. Yeah, you know what? You're you're right. I'm not. I was trying to. I was trying to <laughs> zing you. Uh, I hate to be like you. I hate no, to be you're like right. you're no, very no, no, articulate. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You know what I mean? You're right. I mean, you're right. I was. Got, I got defensive as a natural reaction. Uh, <laughs> did they? Did you? I mean, that's what I mean. No, my parents never really had accents. Really? No. That's. I mean, that's hard. It's it, English is hard to speak without an accent. It just you know. Yeah, you, you my know? parents like they had. You could tell, like, you can tell that they're maybe not native speakers, but they didn't have like a hard Indian accent at all. So what you're saying is, it was harder to get rid of the Southern accent. Yeah, I had to get rid of uh, my Appalachian accent. What did I say yesterday, Tom? You said, "What's that on the floor?" And I said, "Ol." Ol. Ol. Yeah. Ol. <laughs> <laughs> It's like my brain knew that it was not right, but I'm just like, it's more fun. Yeah. That's what I'm like. I kind of did the same thing, getting rid of the Appalachian yeah, yeah. accent. Yeah. And then now I'm just like. It's oh yeah, now I'm cool. all yeah. in. Yeah, I'm all in. Rag. Yeah, I like Warsh rag. I like getting downtown. I like yeah. all that shit. How are you going to make it as an Indian comic without having a bit about your about a, about somebody in your family having an accent? <laughs> no one in my family really has accents. <laughs> I'm playing, dude. That, no, that's fine. a bit right there. You know what I'm saying? Like somebody. Yeah. Imagine that is that is like the alternate oh, the alternate take. Imagine how right. famous you would be if you just yeah. had a bit yeah, about you your mom do doing yeah, her yeah, nails. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like you're building it up. Like I remember what my great grandpa used to say to me, and then like you're gonna do the accent. It's like you know, son. And then, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Put on pants when you go out on the porch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Yeah, in the southern. <laughs> yeah, that's actually. That's, I never thought about that as an angle, but that's a good angle. Yeah. Um, and all right, so you, you so you there's a little application on the website mm -hmm. to apply. Yeah. You and, a, uh, and whatever, a hundred other people fill out this thing. And I, I, I keep feeling like there's a, there's a thing like wrapped in with like Steve's dad and the, a foundation to I help comedians. Yeah. You know what I mean? I didn't do like, a ton of research on it. Probably not a good so thing. It's so weird that like, you wouldn't do any research. You're just like, okay, let me try this thing one day. Well, what's a, the, what's, I, that's kind of just like, what's going to happen? Like, what's going to happen? I'm like, uh, if you choose this lifestyle, like that's just what it is. Okay. Yeah. You know, like you're going to go be in a place for a while and you're going to do the things that you do and then you're going to leave that place afterwards. Then you'll do something else. How else long are you there for? Till the end of the year. A year? This year. Oh, so about five six months. Six months. Yeah. Five, okay. six months. Yeah. Wow. Tom's still learning time. <laughs> no, it's about, it's about five months by the time he gets yeah. there. He's going to come home for a Christmas break probably. Yeah. But home is like an hour an away hour from away, there. So. I'll probably be back and forth here fairly often though. And will you guys tour at all? Like, um, yeah, I think that's the thing that like, 
Like that again, that's the thing that I like want to go and try to figure out There's, more uh, of. You really will learn a lot from him, like yeah. on how to do that and how to, he, you know, how to get it, your stuff out into, into social media and yeah. stuff like that. Although I don't see him as much as I used to all over social media. So maybe he's pulled back from that or it, there has to be, if I know Steve, there has to be like a bullet points of all these great benefits to you that are going to come from this. Yeah, I think that there probably is somewhere. Again, I didn't. I'm trusting more that I trust myself more than I trust whatever I'm walking into. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, and that's not a knock on the situation, but like in every, in any situation, I'm going to trust like myself. Like if you were to, to move to Colorado and be like, I'm going to do, I'm going yeah. to go to the scene there. Dude, I moved here without knowing what was going on. Yeah. What made you pick here? My, uh, I was in LA and I didn't need to be in LA. Um, my brother had gotten his residency over in Winston. And I was like, yeah, I'll just go move there and I'll start and I'll figure out what it, the place is like. And then I didn't discover the idiot box until probably like five, six months moving here. You've been around here doing comedy for nine years? No, I've been around here doing comedy for maybe s seven or eight years. Oh, wow. I feel like I didn't meet you until recently. Well, you were uh, higher up. But we, I was around. Okay. Yeah. You were a capo. Yeah. yeah. We, we, we showed you. I was just. We showed you. I, just, I didn't really start dive, showing up a lot until uh, the, until the pandemic, really. To mm. be honest. Yeah. I'd be around here and there. Yeah, I was here. I was here for the first. I was here the first. My the first idea box I went to was the one that was uh, downtown on Elm Street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went there and a then, few times. But yeah, that lot. one and the other basement one, and then this one. Okay. This one is the only one I know. Is it really? Mm-hmm. I mean, only been. I like this one. I really, I really, I. I really like the one in the coffee shop downtown because it's. Just, I mean, or down under. In yeah, the basement. that was cool. The basement yeah, aspect the basement of it was room very was, cool. Yeah, it was something about that was like it had a, a really low sleep. Really low, and, real dark. Yeah, it yeah. felt like. That sounds cool. Yeah, it felt they like. They had those a, like curtains that like really absorbed all the, like kept all the sound in. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it just had like a. It had that, that basement feeling, baby. And there's like a level, like a, a pop that happens, like, and it had, it yeah. had that a little bit, a little like, a little like the old uh, Good Nights. Yeah, there's yeah. something about walking downstairs to be entertained, that I think like does something to people. Yeah, yeah. there's a room like the Blind Tiger, Jay White caught in this comic in Austin. It had a, not he's in Austin now, but he, it's in San Antonio. That was, you do that. It's in a club, and it's and you go to the back of it, and then you go down this like stairwell into yeah. this little performance room and it's like ah oh, yeah. this is like this, something about those type of rooms are really yeah. cool I thought about that going downstairs I guess because when you're like a kid you go to the movie theater and you always go downstairs and then like yeah I remember yeah, never the really best movie that. experience of my life I was in Ithaca New York and I found out there's some art house cinema before I even really knew what that was I was just like oh there's like a small movie theater uh I walked, it was somewhere downtown. I walked, turns out it was like in an alley somewhere. Nice. All I could see was just like the sign on top of it. Um, and I was like, I, then the door was just like a fucking metal gray door, just like a regular. <laughs> I opened it. There's like movie posters and then there's fucking downstairs. And I remember as I was walking downstairs, I was like, this is about to be the best the best movie I've ever seen. Was it? What was the movie? Do you know? uh, it was Synecdoche, New York. <laughs> and it was. <laughs> I thought he, when he started, I thought he was going to say Citizen Kane. Like, <laughs> yeah, they did that in an art house. I mean, <laughs> put you on some underground stuff, this Citizen Kane. <laughs> Wells, unknown guy, this Wells guy. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, I like that. I like, there's a, there's a club in Toronto. The, the comics there, like after you did, after I did Yucks, there was like a night, like a head shop in the front and then you go back into the back and you walk in and like down a little hallway of this head shop and then it opens up into like this performance space, this room. Yeah. And there's like a lady That's over cool. there selling edibles and like a Gandhi quote and all this like art all over like the ceiling and walls and it's just like, ah, oh, this is. Yeah. Like you there's walk, something like, about oh, this space. This is a place like Lenny Bruce and Bill Hicks. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. It's got that feel. Like Laughing Skull has a little bit of that just there's no downstairs, but it's got that go through the club, back through the Yeah, I think that's then, important. You know? Yeah, I read that in like a, um, I read that somewhere in some article about uh, that restaurant, El Bulli, 
Uh, do you know anything about that? Okay, so it was like a restaurant that was like the guy who started it, like basically, okay, this might be a real long explanation. He created molecular gastronomy. Does that ring a bell molecular with Molecular astronomy? Gastronomy. Castrating? So he would do things with food that like you wouldn't expect to be done with food. So he like did a thing where like his most famous thing that I can try to explain is like he took like the juice of an olive and like kind of like really refined down and made it like a really just like the essence of what a, a olive tastes like and in just in the juice. And then he figured out a way to drop that juice into this solution where it creates a sphere in and of itself. So you pop that in your mouth and it's just like a full explosion of olive and it tastes like the most pristine olive you've ever had. This is, I've never had it. This is just what I've heard. Um, and like wow. that guy's restaurant like sold out for years. Like uh, there's like Bourdain episodes. He was like, he was he is the best restaurant in the world for like four or five years running. Just like he was like universally revered guy. And like he did a profile in Esquire once. And part of what he said was, to go somewhere to like really experience something, the journey is part of it. And like his restaurant was located like outside of the city. You had to go like up and around mountains. It was like it was like a real oh, yeah. trek to just get there. Like you had to stay the night. Um, and that so always stuck with you, me. So in a situation like that, I would think mentally you have or psychologically you have like a built in like it's all you it, it has to be good you've invested all this stuff in it you know agreed what I mean? and so what so you're i'm just saying you know making, what i mean you're gonna like, make it totally better than it even is probably. yeah but like that's i think that's part of it like i don't think that that's like a bad thing right i think that like yeah you've gone through all this trouble you want it to be good so you show up wanting it to be good and this guy can deliver you know yes. what i mean so like once it's delivered everything merges together well i think that's the thing with these comedy clubs is like if you have to even if it's a short journey where you just walk from one area to the next and it opens up to you and like suddenly different possibilities become oh yeah come like enter your mind of like what this could be and like that i think is like inter that i always found interesting with with entertainment stuff huh i wonder can you like could you like the venue that you did your play in could you set up the entrance so that you sort of create those kind of like like what i think of yeah like you Todd probably Glass, could the way he sort of Gets to a club yeah. sometimes. Yeah, and yeah, that's a good one. That's it a good into one. Like how yeah. to make it feel the way he wants it to feel for. Yeah, them. yeah. He probably for that thing. I probably could. I was writing it and producing it at the same time. So like, yeah, that was crazy to that me. Was You'd stupid. be like, I'm, I'm doing it again next week, and you know, I haven't finished writing it yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was like, by the middle of the week. I hadn't finished writing it. <laughs> uh, but like, yeah. Now that I'm thinking about it, like, so actually, the place that I chose, I chose specifically because I liked the venue. Like okay. the venue was uh, outdoors like surrounded by a garden and uh, just like a little stage kind of like right in the middle of it. And I was like, oh, this, so I found the venue, then I retrofitted what the concept was afterwards because I liked the venue. And it, that venue is like a little bit outside of. I think that's a crazy talent, man, that you can just like, you, you're like, I'm gonna find a venue. You're like, it's not like you're like, I got this thing I wanna do. You found the venue, then you created the show as you went, like that's, that's nuts to me. Thank you. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's uh, not, it was, uh, I was out of my mind for like a month. I like, I remember like legitimately once it was all over, like walking into like seeing, like honestly seeing my girlfriend for the first time in a month. I, we uh, lived together. And I like, I know, well, what, after that, I know done, what you mean by that. You know, I would have, was when that. I was, sometimes when I'm writing or when I, when I was work, doing so, then there's this is, and I'd have to write like four or five things. I would just get, or a big story, I just get locked in. He's super and it's locked like, in. Yeah. You come up and eat every now and then, mm -hmm. and then it's yeah. just your mind just, it just stays right. Like, it's, you're never not doing that. Yeah, even, even when you're eating, it's yeah. like, let me take like a 15 minute break to calm down, yeah. but it's because I need to do it more. Yeah. yeah. And even if I would be like, let's go to like my son's baseball practice or something, yeah. it'd be like, my mind would still circle yeah. through like wordings and things. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Everything yeah, yeah. just becomes compartments of time in between the thing that you're doing. You're right. Like it's, it's like, like you finish it and you come up for it. Now, when you look, if you were to look back, if you were to do that, that, that play again, do you have scripts sort of? Yeah. It? Yeah. Now it's like all done. Now I just have to like, but you, would you just redo it the same way or would you rewrite off of that? I would, re I'm going to re I'm going to like tighten it up, kind of like use the parts that worked. Cause it didn't, there were some parts that I was like, okay, this needs a rewrite. Right. Um, but yeah, you, I think I have a, I have enough for a full one night play. 
Now, are you a good collaborative writer and comedy producer kind of? I think so. Uh, I'm only hesitant because like, I, like when I'm working on my stuff, I like, I'm the guy who's in charge of my stuff. Right. Um, but like, I do like getting input from people. Like I was collaborating with my, the other guy that was working on it with me. I, we had like, he, we, out of necessity, we had to be like really great collaborators because he was the other Hard part of the whole play. That that yeah. No, we, he and I work really well together. Uh, but like he was the, like he had no problem with me being like, okay, the show's tonight and I just finished writing it. Can we rehearse it now and then go on? And he was like, yeah, that's fine. But like, it was like, but like he also like any, and like reading it through once with him, he and I both knew where the dead spots were so I could go back and rewrite those. Um, so yeah, just having it like, I think like if I'm working with other people, I'm happy to seed myself to like, what are, what are you doing? What do you want to do? Where can I help you with it? Right. Um, but if I have people working with me, I'm like, this is what I'm doing. Can you help with this? No, that's fine. Let's find something else you can help with or get the fuck out of my face. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> so what's sort of the expectation from the, from the, the foundation play that you're going to, do they have an expectation for you? It seems like Steve would be like, all right, I want to make sure we're taking, we're, we're doing this and this and this. He seems more organized than, I don't know, yeah. just show up and do whatever. Yeah. I assume my, from my understanding of just like the process of getting into it is like the expectation is you are there to create, collaborate, be a mentor, uh, as much as you can. And, um, here, we, here are the resources for you to do all of those things. But like, it is up to you to like figure out what it is you want to do. So I, I'm going in with like ideas of what I want to kind of oh, start, okay. what I want to get done, what I want to like learn, what I want to like move through. Um, and it's just kind of an opportunity to like do that without having to do. I'm really you know. interested in it. Like, like, like hearing back from you, like maybe I can, we can zoom you in and talk about yeah. it a little bit, like what's the, how it's going and what the process is. And you know, like I, that's the, you're just going to get better at it. Like all, all it, that's what I was thinking about that the other day. I'm going to slide it to you, Seth, actually. There's the idea of that, like, uh, the thing about live performance is no matter what, after your last set, you're better than you were before it. Oh, oh I don't necessarily believe, I don't. You don't think so? That? I don't feel like last night made me any better at comedy. Oh, that's yeah. You know? I think that's, I think that, that you, there's a difference between doing bad, but being, I think that you're still bad. I don't think there's a time that you could do live performance and not be better after. If you had a bad set, that's, di that's fine. But that you doesn't think, think that a, you don't think a performance can sort of sap your, maybe, maybe you're at a level, confidence a little, maybe you know? you're at a level where you're not learning anymore. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, you're at the point where it's like you know all this, yeah, you know the, the pitfalls, I guess. So it's like, oh, I did that thing, but like with me, if I do it, it's like, oh, okay, I know not to do that. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I did learn that before. last night. I'm just, I'm really kidding, but I, obviously, <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, I, I feel like yes, I'm, but I, there's, there's times where, and that, but that's on me or on you, or on the performer. Like you get there and then you don't do anything to get better while you're there. Yeah. You can, you, I think you can do that. I think, I think you that you can do that. I think that like, but I'm not going to do that. Right. You know what I mean? Like, that's not how I'm set no. up. Huh. You better create some good shit. Leaving your I fucking for hope six so. Months, man. Good Christ, dude. I fucking hope so. It's only six months though. And you're not that far where you can drive every now and then. But you might just be slammed with like work that you're doing. And I mean, I don't know if I would want to leave. I would want to. You only get six months there. Yeah. And I mean, you only get six months there. There is like a little bit of me right now that's kind of like having a little too good of a time. Like, especially, actually, you know what? It's just because uh, I don't know when it's going to air, uh, but just because Fourth of July just passed. And I was like, um, I was driving and I was like, you should enjoy right now. Because like anytime something, I don't, I don't know if it's true for everybody, but like, and then somebody anytime, cuts you off and you're like, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, it's just the idea that like, anytime I get something that's good, the right beginning of it is the time that's the most enjoyable. Cause it's like, you just got something that's yeah. great. Yeah. Like no matter what, by the end of this, it will have been done. And like the expectations of what I want, no matter, even if I accomplish a lot, the expectations of what I wanted to accomplish will always not meet the expectations of what I did just because I want to do a lot of things. Right. Uh, but like right before anything starts, it's like 
usually you're anxious for it to start, but I'm like, no, this is the best time. You have nothing but, uh, you know, and ex- be dreams. excited about it. Yeah, it's nothing but excitement coming up. Like right now, you're as excited as you're going to be uh, going into this, and then work is going to start. You know, like you're going to actually have to start doing things. And I'm like, once you go there, because it's only six months, I'm just like, yeah, I don't, I'm not going to go have fun. I'm yes. going to like go and do stuff. Yeah. When we did a, right after 9-11, we had scheduled, we'd figured out me. Why, why'd you say 9-11? Because uh, that's when it happened. Right? It, it's not just because I'm here. I don't think, I don't think you meant <laughs> I, I, you know, it's I'm, Indian accents and 9/11 well, all just, the way down. Well, just, except, uh, except Indians are the ones that are the least to blame, right, for 9/11. Yeah, and not they had really no involvement. Doesn't mean we weren't blamed, huh? Yeah, I was about to say, I got that yeah well, a lot of people not really, you know, cutting at straws there. Yeah, yeah. well, <laughs> it's just, uh, just splitting hairs was the one I tried to figure out, and I said cutting straws. Cutting straws, yes. <laughs> Why did you say cutting straws? <laughs> cutting straws isn't even a thing. It's not. I just, some, I just sometimes you've just drawn say the it. short straw as a thing. <laughs> yeah. There's uh, um, the last straw as a thing. I've never heard yeah. of cutting straws. I guess the cokeheads. Maybe that's what's yeah. going on for you. Um, Sorry, it was after 9/11. Yeah, with 9/11, we uh, we had um, it just happened that 9/11 happened. But we had me, uh, Danny Bevins, uh, Daryl Lennox, who just passed. A great, he's a great comic. Um, and uh, Kostaki Konopoulos. We Went down to uh, in St. Pete Beach, and we got like a, we stayed at the owner of those co- of Coconuts Comedy Clubs. We mm-hmm. stayed at his h- house, all of us, for a month, and did like we like a comedy camp. Like we would get, I literally brought a box with like every notebook yeah. that I'd ever written jokes in, you know, and and we just worked on comedy all day. Yeah. Every day, like, and, we, That's and my then plan. we'd go do shows, and we would come back that night, and it was, it was, it ended up being we worked on comedy as much as I could have like hoped for. Yeah, I want to be sick of it by the end. Yeah, it was fun, and yeah. I think it, and we talked comedy, or we just hung out, but it was, it was always like, what do you think of this? What do you think of that? And it was, it was a really, and we, it was a really cool thing, and we were like, we got to do this every year, and then we never did it again. <laughs> you know? But because you know, nine eleven didn't happen again. Yeah, well, yeah. It, well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's a good idea though. That is like a what nine eleven? I knew your people. No. Were <laughs> Damn it! Damn it! <laughs> I made a half-assed joke attempt that didn't really land, and you nailed me on it. Yeah. Now it's gonna stay in. <laughs> 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 it's, it's Chandler, baby. I'm Chandler. <laughs> 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 But yeah, because I because then life happened. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, yeah. You know, I have it. Then I was in a motorhome driving around the country doing bits, and it yeah. was like, but you know, we all you stayed in touch here and there. But still, it's like you, that level of like diving in and doing the work. Yeah, where nothing else really matters. Yeah, like it's, I'm envious of you getting to do that. That's yeah, no, cool that's thing. what I'm most excited about. It's like it's a real, it's a chance to kind of like. shut life out a little bit and just do this for a long time. Yeah. It's like practice at like, what would it be like if this is li- if I literally got to work every day on this, yeah. Mm. Yeah. you know, and like did like, all right, fucking coffee. Let me wander in here and do this thing. I don't really want to, but this guy's working. This is where you only yeah. get this, yeah. you know, and, and even when it sucks, just be like, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't this matter. This is going to help me get to where that's I the thing. need to be. Yeah. I'm, that's the thing. Like, walking into it, I'm prepared for it to be anything. The only thing that, like, really matters is, like, what I put in, what I'm going to try to get out of it. Like, it's yeah, like... Yeah, the thing I'm most shocked about about this is that this is happening, and I'm just now hearing about it from you a week before you leave. And not that I'm hearing... Not because I'm hearing about it from you, but, like, how have I not, like... This seems anti Hofstetter for it to not be this huge thing that, I, that everybody knows about already. So I went up at uh, Brewer's Kettle. It was fine. It was, it was, I was, a, I was rambly and I'd had a few like conversations about this bit I wanted to work on with other friends of mine that are, con- and the way I did it in those conversations, it worked really well. So I was super excited by it. Oh, yeah, and then yeah. you get up on stage and you try to recreate those sort of conversate then now they're just one side of the guy talking yeah and it's it's got some lines in it it's so it's it's either at that stage where now i just 
throw it away yeah. and be like, oh, I'm not going to bother working on that. Or yeah. I just keep working keep on trying. it until I figure yeah, it yeah. out. It's got a couple good, you know. I walked into a, it all starts with basically, I walk, it doesn't start, but where the prem, where the genesis of yeah. the idea, I walk, I just, I'd walked into a Starbucks and was just in my own head or whatever and picking up my coffee and the girl goes, you should smile. <laughs> Okay, and I, I'm so excited yeah. that you're working on a bit like this. Yeah, and I said, uh, and I just, and I looked up and I smartassly said, I am so sick of women telling me to smile. Yeah, that's so good. And nobody laughed. She goes, well, maybe you should pay attention to that. And she was right. I just needed to smile. But the idea that just the, now obviously there's, that's a funny yeah. thing to happen. So now it's like, now I'm going to try to write around that about. Yeah. Because I'd been talking to my buddy Danny about it, and he was like, "Why would they even say that?" Yeah, you know. I, I personally and 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 he and I was like, "What do you mean?" He was like, "You don't say that to people, you know." And I'm like, "But don't you have a place where you go in and they know you and they're like?" Uh, and he was like, "Well, I I do, yeah, but it's not a Starbucks." And I was like, "Well, that's really where I go every day." Yeah, I don't they think there's anything wrong there, with it being you know a Starbucks. I mean? <laughs> like when I changed my cup to just Tom instead of Tom and Serena, the girls were like, oh, what happened? You know? Like, <laughs> you know? So they know me there. You know what I mean? I'm yeah, like yeah, yeah. I'm like Norm walking into Cheers. Yeah. But I don't have any jokes. You know, yeah. I don't have any like, hey, how you doings? And I'm like, you know, and I don't yeah, have yeah. the, I'm living in a dog's world. Just, and I'm there's that guy. Whatever, yeah. Underwear or whatever, you know? There's like, Tom and Serena. So it got me thinking. Tom and I formerly need, Serena. Yes, it's Tom. It's Brokenhearted Tom. That's my nickname there. You know. <laughs> so the idea. So I wanted to write some stuff about. So the, now the idea is to try to build out from there, and then so I. Yeah. That's what I was trying to do last night, and it, the build out part didn't really yeah. come through. I. Know? Like when my first year or two, I had something like that, where I was trying to say like where I, I still believe this, but like, I understand why it doesn't work. Telling people to smile is like a good thing. Yeah. I, I, I left there thinking like, yes, like, cause I left there, like, like I ended up, I ended up thanking her when, before I was leaving, like I literally went back and was like, by the way, you were right. Thank you. You really yeah. you changed my mood. And I didn't even sort of even realize I was in a bad mood, yeah. you know? Cause I'd just been in the car reading a little bit and been like, all right, I was really trying to be like in the now and just let everything yeah. go. And I was feeling pretty peaceful. Yeah. And then I walk in and I obviously am not showing that. Yeah. That's why you don't have any jokes when you walk in. You're, you're, you're. I'm glum. Yeah. <laughs> you've been practicing mindfulness. You think Norm read a, yeah. you think Norm meditated before he walked in. <laughs> yeah, no, I like that idea. Cause I've sometimes will be meditating and realize I'm frowning. Yes. I'm like, what the fuck is the point of this? <laughs> like, what are you doing? Turn that frown yeah, upside just down. Try, Let me like, meditate on that. <laughs> yeah. So, it, yeah. So, so you have, I, of course you have a bit about it, right? I don't have a bit. It was, yeah. uh, I was like, I remember doing that bit and getting yelled at by like some women. And mm -hmm. I was like, all right, let me, that just, there's no reason to keep doing this. Yes. Yeah. When I told it to Jared, I told it to my buddy Jared and his, and his wife, Lay, she said, all right, she was. She laughed well, first of all when I said it, and then she said, "Welcome to how it feels like to be a woman." You know. What I mean? Yeah. And so that may be a line. You know, what I mean, that's how sometimes I. Can you know what it might stuff, be you if know? you want to workshop it, uh, just because it's this is what I thought of, um, and I'm going to tell you anyway. Uh, is that like, you should not say it to women, but everyone should be saying it to men all the time. Yeah, so that they stop saying it so to So they stop saying it no, to women. No, because and I'm going to be like, hey, maybe, it worked. May, yeah, because that's what I'm saying. might yeah. work. Maybe that's the thing. Maybe men will stop being so glum and grumpy all the time if someone's reminding them to smile. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And yeah. then it'll get annoying. And men, men smiling? No, yeah. They're like, smiling. guys are creepy now. They just smile at you. They're still doing the same horrible shit. Yeah. Yes. I think, uh, I think men do a lot of kind things that gets underestimated and not because sure. because it doesn't play like what into, i don't know just picking up a meal for somebody that you do, do you don't do kind things for your, your girlfriend you don't do no. your yeah no yeah yeah not yet but like no one th i don't think that like i think i know what you're talking about Are holding you... a door for a woman isn't me being sexist or in, in, implementing my well i don't even know what it, you know i'm not doing i'm not i'm just that's to me. That's just polite. Polite. Not, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm. 
I do it for I do it for dudes too. You know yeah. what I mean? Sometimes I do it to girls in a way that's like the same way where I'll hold the door and like you know and they can go yeah. and, and I'm like okay now they're just walking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That feels being stupid. polite has yeah. become misogynistic yes. in some way. Yes. Yeah. So you know, holding the door, like letting a girl in the car first. That's not a. Yeah. That's not that's not me imposing my maleness in my mind perpetuating it's, the patriarchy yeah what, so per, is that what it's is yeah, that what, what it is i think that's a phrase I, you're I haven't looking even for bothered to learn the <laughs> 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 yes we have a broad consensus that men sucks the broads won't quit talking about it <laughs> <laughs> weaponized incompetence is what they call it weaponizing know? confidence yeah, incompetence like if a guy's like Oh, I don't want to do the bed. I don't want to make the bed, babe. I suck at it. You do it better than me. So you don't got to do it. It's weaponized and comp. I learned that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I huh. look at that as more like, like, if it, over the, you know, it's, we're, we're, we're breaking up. So it's not, I'm not really a good example, but it's 25 years or whatever. But it's, I've learned, it, it hasn't been like, I don't want to do these things. Like, I, I, somehow I do the laundry wrong every single time. You know what I mean? So there's, if you're constant, if it's like somebody's always nitpicking it, like maybe I should just listen and do it the way I'm told, but there's a little bit of like, uh, is it, is yeah. it I'm, a, I'm a grown adult. I know how to drive a car. Yeah. What do you mean don't drive with my knees? It makes you uncomfortable. Okay. Well, I mean, this is how I drive. You know yeah. what I mean? I'm, I'm going to ch make changes. I'll, obviously. I drive with my knees. Yeah. Like, what is so, wrong with both of you. What do you mean? Like, what are just, you talking about? Not you all the time. With your knees? If I'm driving on the highway yeah. for eight hours and I'm like, yeah, I'll be, like you can shot. drive with your knees, you can eat, and just that's like on your knee and thigh. Yeah. But somehow, but somehow you ain't got you, those meaty knees, dude. Yeah, no, but <laughs> yeah, uh, it, well, you don't do it for the whole time. You just you just kind of can do it. You just whatever. You do yeah. it for a few minutes. Do it for ten minutes. You know? Do you do you ever drive like where you sit Indian si style in your driver's seat? No. With the this thing on me neither okay <laughs> somehow me driving with my knees is unsafe but my wife driving with both feet sitting indian style in her seat <laughs> that's fine Wait, what not even on a break no yikes i know you know so it's but i don't know what i what how why why i turned this into bitching about how my wife drives <laughs> but no it's like it's not weaponized uh un unconfident it's more like okay if i do i'm if if the way I do, if you have a specific way you want this done and I'm not doing it that way and it irritates you that when I do, then okay, you can do that. And yeah, I'll, I think I'll do something I, else. I think I'll that's fold. Fair. Oh, I don't yeah. fold the towels right? Okay. You know? Yeah. What I'll learn to how to do that. And then I'll forget. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, but I'm not doing it on purpose. It's still going to be weaponized, <laughs> right? I think. I don't know. Right. We were talking earlier about how I sort of was the first man, like in my family, like in her family, that would do the dishes or help with dishes. Oh yeah. At, at Thanksgiving, you know, and the, the men would all just sit there, and I'd start. He does dishes. Yeah. You got a good one. You trained him well. Yeah. You know what I mean, so it's, and now everybody helps. Yeah. You know, so it's kind of a thing. They like, always want more. Yes. Like, <laughs> first it was like, oh, he can iron, and now it's like you iron and wrong. <laughs> <laughs> It's like when you get a new job and they're like, oh, you can write. Yeah. Oh, you can do Excel. And then pretty soon you're doing everything. everything. Yes. Yeah. You have to pretend you don't know things, right? Yeah. Huh. You can't really do that in comedy. You yeah, can't you can't. I, pretend, I pretend like I can't write roast jokes, but I, that's just because I, I'm not good at them. Are you not? No, they turn, they, they get too mean. I'm like one of those people that like they, when you write a roast joke, it gets like, it's just mean. It's not really funny. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, that's, that's the line. Like you think, okay, it's about, it's just about saying mean shit yeah. about somebody. And it is, but it, you have to be like, oh, we love Jamie, you know, so blah, blah, blah. But, and then you sort of point out. The yeah. Thing. I can like, only do like gentle ribbing in conversation. Like if I'm like writing something down, I'm like, let this think the I'm meanest like, fucking thing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't have that either. Like, I'm going to bury someone, you know, mm -hmm. unless they unless they say the slightest thing mean to me. And then I'll fo I got 10 minutes on what a shitty human you are. Yeah, going to fly yeah. off the handle. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, I, I'll, 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 I'll brood on it for a while, but I'll have some, you know, yeah, I mean? yeah, I'll yeah. have I will <laughs> I will I will think of the shit, you know.
That, and and it's, it, it's, again, it works against me. Like, I'll be trying to work things out with Serena over the last two years or whatever, and then something will happen, and I will send a text that there's no fucking coming back from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's just like, reminds her of her, everything that she hated about her dad or her mom. You know what I mean? It's like, that's everything, like every comparison that she doesn't like about herself, like, there it yeah. is. Like, just ah, logged up here, ready to go. Fuck. Ah, damn. You would have been fine before texting. You'd probably still be happy. I was way guy. better before Facebook. Yeah. And yes, <laughs> like, yes, like, I was always happy and positive and blah, blah, blah. And then, no. I swear to you, I was I would like, love to see the I was the and positive after. force guy. <laughs> I'm telling you, I was. And then, like, before Facebook, he worked as a clown. He was Patch Adams. Patch Adams. No, but it, I, I, it, I, it somehow, I, like, giving voice to sort of the, the real negativity or calling yeah. people dumb and stuff like that, that somehow. Which is so shocking because Facebook came out of such a nice, loving place. Yeah, but. <laughs> And I saw you got rewarded for that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. And there is something in me that, there is something in me that the mean is the funny sometimes. Yeah. Like saying that, mm. saying that the, the, they needed to hear that. Yeah. You know, I got a little bit of that in me. You know yeah. What I mean? so. Yeah. I don't. I try not to be. I. I I'm not good at like mean. not to think that my comedy comes from being mean, but I do think there's like a non-zero part of it that is. I like to I like to try to make things that are like funny. Yeah, but like for instance, like you do the thing about energetic. like like you, you you I don't even you don't really have the whole premise fleshed out, but the the premise of um, therapy is a cult. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. obviously That's just like that, that two obviously jokes comes from a place of you getting sick of people talking yeah. about like therapy and what their therapist is telling them and who needs yeah. therapy, and you're just like, oh, fuck you, this is bullshit. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Right. So it's the, I, good comedy comes from that. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I get annoyed a lot. I guess that's the same thing. <laughs> yeah. I get annoyed a lot. Yeah. That's probably the thing where it really comes from. I'm mostly annoyed. My sister was a big fan of comedy and she was telling me she's been listening to a lot of XM and Sirius and she's like, and then she realizes there's a darkness to it. To oh, a yeah. lot of the comedy. There's like this darkness that you end, that if you really are involved in it and listen, like she was listening to it a lot. And she said it started reflecting into her life that negativity. There's so much negativity in comedy. Kind of cynicism, I guess. Cynicism, yeah, and cynicism negativity for about sure. the world yeah. and about other people and blah blah. And she would like it would sort of seep in. And then she, you'll be in. She'd be like in a meeting, and somebody would say, and then it's like that. You say that mean thing back to her, you know, like or yeah, or it, she could just feel a, like a level. She was like, there's like a level of darkness that kind of sticks with me after a comedy you know i've never that's really a good i've never thought about it that way that makes a lot of sense to me like that resonates with me for sure yeah yeah that makes a lot of sense yeah just, you think a comedy is like oh it's happy and joyful yeah. but it makes you uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of laughing com comes from the cynicism yeah there's like a, I I recognize it when like i'll be watching something with my girl maybe we'll be watching some reality show and someone will come on who's just like a normal looking person but like in my head, I'll go to like every dumb stereotype I can think about this person, like every yeah. uh, just stupid thing this person is. And I'll just be like, and I'll just look at my girl and be like, look at this fucking guy. Yeah. <laughs> right. And she'll just be like, what? He looks like a normal person. Right. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that's because I'm running through 15 different things I would use to make fun of him. <laughs> I did that a little. I did that a little yesterday. We watched, um, we had a sit down where we watched, uh, we, we watched, no, so we watched uh, Twilight. Oh, oh yeah? yeah, I'd never seen it, and he was like, "You got, we'll do like a mystery science three thousand with it." Yeah, yeah. And I was instantly like, ah, "These guys, they're all so white." Yeah, you know, like, and he, I can just—he gets naturally defensive a lot at my. Wait, you the like way Twilight? I talk. I no, he like, just doesn't. He just thought it was. He likes it as a comedy. It makes me laugh. It's okay. super funny. And so it's bad good for me. Yeah. Okay. But he'll correct me on like when I like I I, I make fun of how white somebody is, and it's not funny to him at all. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like you can't talk that way about people. What would you say? Their skin? What do you? How would you describe their skin? Like you said, they're not overly white. They're non-typical. 
I don't, I don't. You described them in a way like no, they're just they don't look like a typical person, but you had like a phrase for it. Like uh, they they non- look like they're CGI. I think I said. I don't yeah. Know. No, well, you just said they're not. Uh, he was very defensive for me, making fun of their looks. Yeah. But I'm like that. I'm like, ugh. Oh, uh, unconventionally, he was like, he was like saying Robert Pattinson was ugly, and I was like, dude, he was the heartthrob then, you know? He's unconventionally uh, attractive. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't think Robert Pattinson's that good looking. I understand that he's yeah. a heartthrob, but yeah. He's not like hubba bubba hunk, you know? They but. had to go out and find, like, we need to find, like, really white. I mean, <laughs> yeah. not just white, but really white people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. That's hard to find that. People aren't that white unless they're redheads. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Like, that's, they're so white. And then against that, like, really green backdrop, it, like, looks yeah. more white. Yeah. I'm thinking about, I only saw the first one, I, but I'm thinking about that. What's the game they played? They play baseball? baseball right? Is it baseball? Like okay. <laughs> oh my God. I didn't know they were playing baseball. I thought they were playing some fucking vampire stick or whatever. They were playing vampire baseball. They, they, yeah. And they, yes, the fastballs, right? Then they'd hit it and run, and then they'd run a zillion miles an hour and climb a tree, except the two guys that ran into each other one time. It was like yeah, so. They didn't call it. It's awful, awful baseball. Bad communication. <laughs> it was, it was really. awful baseball and awful movie. <laughs> That's what makes it great. Yeah, it's yeah. So I do you remember the movie not me. being that great? But uh, like, isn't it like the first one wasn't supposed to be good? No, the first one's the worst one, but like the last one is my favorite. <laughs> oh, you've so watched funny. all of them? Yeah. Oh, I think we're gonna I don't do really it too. I remember any of the middle ones, but I remember the last one. He keeps same. talking about them throwing a, a baby into the fire. <laughs> <laughs> It's so funny, dude. It's so funny. It does does sound like something you do as a sketch. Like, we'll throw a baby in the fire. It'll be hilarious. It's supposed to be, like, sad and scary, but it's just like... Because, like, it explodes. (laughs) She, like, holds the baby and it, like, smiles. And she goes... And it just... It's so good. I can see that being good. Yeah. I can get behind that. Yeah. And then, like... uh, I wish they would let you know, like, if you watch... Two of, if you watch two of these, in the third one, you'll see a baby blow up. Yeah. But I was out after the first one. It's the fifth one. There are five. Uh, is it the last one? Yeah. You have to watch all of them to see yeah. a baby blow well, up? Well, I mean, it's not a really in, Like, here's the thing. Blow. You can see a baby blow up, but seeing a baby blow up in context is it's probably more fun. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if I'm going to make it through them. I'm not going to watch it. It doesn't. Depends. Depends on the. Come on. I don't remember any of the middle ones, honestly. I just remember the last one and it being fucking hilarious. Like they CGI this baby's face on. Okay. It's like it's like one of those movies where like, I think I appreciate it now because I'm older, and it's like, <laughs> the people people were in a room talking about this movie and making decisions, and then these were the ones they made. Yeah. It's so funny to me. Yeah, that's the type of thing. Like, if I was watching Twilight, that would be the person that makes me mad. Is like the people who decided this was good. That's yeah. what you were saying yesterday. Yeah. Like, people yeah. said. It's like, it's insane that grown adults did this and they're like, this is, we'll do this. I and don't there was know. probably some young kid who was like, oh, I get to work on a movie. I get to work on it. And then it's just like, no. Yeah. And that's like they're <laughs> some kid my age or something. Now, it's because you can't she, convince me that the books are now really good. I've never read the books. I never read the books, yeah. I know that that Fifty Shades of Grey apparently is not good. Oh my god! The movie like apparently, the, the writing is really bad. It's in the like books or the movies? The grader. books, really? Yeah, it's yeah. Bad. I've heard that the writing is like really bad in that. Really? Yeah. yeah. Again, this is like a huge percentage of women in our culture. They uh, they were crazy about those books. Yeah, mm-hmm. and that's the mentality of it. Like a sixth grader. Fourth. Like I'd say fourth. Wow, I'm not even kidding. I dude. think that means to me that that really is like that shows what your opinion of women is that you think that they are they read on a fourth grade level. I didn't. That's say what you that. just said. Is that what he said? Basically, I said I, that they yeah. More, you know, honestly, it's a second. No, they don't deserve. <laughs> they don't. De- they don't deserve more. That is what they want. <laughs> That is what they consumed. Ben Shapiro, right? No, I'm just saying, like you can't, you can't. There's no blaming culture for that. There's only blaming the, the, there's only blaming the people that were that audience that made that stuff famous. It's not all women. It's 
Not okay. Yes, you, here you are over here. Yes, and not all women. Look at you. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag not, not all women. <laughs> was that was that book actually popular? Or was it one of those things that like was made to seem very popular? Oh no, it was. I I I. I it was in the zeitgeist. It was. It was in the zeitgeist, but it was like, like the same way that like books they were. Succession they were, was in the zeitgeist. It's not that popular, but yeah, everyone seems to be talking about. Yeah. It. yeah okay. That's right, a good, yeah. That's a good. You know what I mean? You're right. It's like a certain group of people, a loud group of yeah, people that speak that are, that only can read on a sixth grade level. Yeah, dude, <laughs> that movie is so bad. It's bad, bad. It's not funny. Bad. Which one? Fifty Shades. Okay. It was on Max. Watched it the other day. Not funny. Just yeah. bad. But I feel like I, the the reason we ended up here in the whole circle of things is we had been talking about how how uh, how successful Matt Rife is and how if you know. He's oh yeah. Him. And I'd made reference to like they were talking about how gorgeous he is and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, he's, but it's in that sort of twilight. It's twilight's fault. It's yeah, like yeah, he's yeah. got that white skin, like yeah. that look. And, and then that's why we ended up back to the, yeah. you know. Any, any young pop star that's slightly androgynous looking is going to be the pop star of the moment. That's just like yeah. what it is. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, you what don't I have like. much of a shot, dude. I have no shot. Yeah. I got, yeah. I got a different universe I got to go to. 